Welcome back everybody. Um, today's video is going to be all about safety and um, how to stay safe while you're out at sea on your small inflatable boat. I'm going to talk about different equipment that you're going to definitely need, um, general safety guidelines, some basic rules of navigation, just tips really to keep you safe, things you definitely need to know while you're out enjoying your small inflatable boat. So let's go. So number one on the list and the most essential thing is a life jacket or a personal flotation device. Whatever you choose, um, it's absolutely essential that you wear one. Um, make sure it's the right size for you and um, make sure it's in good working order. If it has a canister that inflates, um, some of those can run out after a while. So um, they have a shelf life. Make sure your canister is in date. Um, and that you are buying a trustworthy brand as well. Make sure it's a good life jacket that will save your life if you ever happen to fall overboard. Number two on the list um, and equally important as a life jacket is a kill cord. This is vital if you are using an outboard motor. Make sure you have a kill cord attached to your outboard and clip it to your body or your life jacket or around your wrist, anywhere on yourself, make sure it's clipped to you whenever you are using your outboard. Um, if you fall over, um, this will disconnect from the outboard and instantly cut off the motor. The prop will stop spinning, um, could save your life, stops it from running over you if you're in the water or anyone else in the water, and it just stops your boat running away out of control if you're not on board. So yeah, kill cords, absolutely essential. Another quick tip regarding kill cords. If you've got um, more than one person on board, you might want to get another kill cord for your passenger. Because if you've got the only kill cord and you fall over or are, if you lose it, then um, your passenger will have no means to start up the engine without the kill cord that's attached to you. So yeah, a good tip. Um, have two or more kill cords on board if you have uh, more than one person on board. The next key piece of equipment is a VHF radio. I have a handheld one, it can float. Um, I clip it to my life jacket so it's attached to me at all times. Um, it's essential that you have one of these to be able to contact um, authorities if there's an emergency. Um, you should also look into um, how to operate a VHF radio. Um, if you don't know how that works, um, some places require a license as well. Check that out. Um, but yeah, some some means of communication back to land or other boats. So yeah, VHF radio is really good. Um, or or your mobile phone, of course. Make sure you're within signal range um, and it's waterproof. But yeah, some some form of communication to uh, contact someone in any kind of emergency. So the fourth piece of kit that you essentially need to have on your SIB is an anchor. Um, you need to make sure that you can um, anchor yourself in one place if you need to. Um, if you're fishing, of course, that's obviously something you're going to be doing a lot of. Um, but in terms of safety, if your engine stops, you don't want to be drifting around, um, potentially drifting into shipping channels or something like that into danger so you need an anchor to be able to um, anchor yourself in one spot if you're in trouble and then you can call for help so an anchor essential make sure it's um, heavy enough for your sib um, my my anchor is about 3.2 kilograms um, it's a grapple style um, for mixed ground works well in clay rock um, even works quite well on sand sometimes, um, it can drag a bit. But uh, yeah, make sure you have your anchor, um, make sure you have some chain attached to the anchor with a quick release method like this, clip it on to the top like that with a zip tie or something like that. Um, and then obviously your rope attaches to your chain. Um, you need a lot of rope, make sure you have plenty of rope spare. Um, check out the depth you're in and then adjust how much rope you need according to that. But yeah, I have absolutely tons of rope in here in case I need extra. So have loads of rope. 
chain and anchor. So the oars are um, a common uh, piece of kit that usually comes with your sib. Um, I don't think I've seen many sibs that don't come without oars. Um, they're very lightweight um, and they tuck on the inside and they clip into um, some little clips on the inside of my sieve on here, each side, so they're tucked away. Um, but yes, oars are essential. Um, if your motor dies while you're out at sea, um, these, could, <laughs> these could really help you to get back to safety, back to land or over to another boat or whatever it may be. Just being able to power your sieve um, by by hand as such with oars is is essential for an emergency situation if your outboard dies for whatever reason. Next piece of kit is a first aid kit. Just a basic one really, you don't need anything too crazy. Um, hopefully nothing uh, drastic happens while you're out at sea, but if you're fishing, for instance, you could uh, end up with cuts or something like that. A hook could get stuck in your in your skin. So yeah, you just need a first aid kit on board for any uh, minor first aid requirements that may crop up while you're out there. Um, just that initial bit of first aid could could really buy you time if you're if you're in danger or you've uh, cut yourself badly. Um, so yeah, a basic first aid kit is a great piece of uh, equipment to have on board. Okay, so we've covered most of the uh, essential equipment that I think you need. Um, next, um, I'll talk about some basic principles that uh, apply when you're out on your sib. Um, the first uh, bit of information that I can give to you is um, check your boat before you get out there. Um, check it for uh, any punctures, uh, any kind of tears, check the seams, check the valves, just make sure the boat itself is in good working condition. The next uh, bit of information um, is to make sure you stick to the capacity of the boat. Um, don't overload with too many passengers or too much gear. Make sure you're under the weight capacity of your particular sib. Yeah, having too many people on board going over the capacity could cause uh, stability issues, things like that. So don't go over the rated capacity of your sib. The next bit of info is um, inflating your sib. Um, sounds obvious, but make sure you inflate it up to the manufacturer's recommended pressure for your particular sib. Don't go under, don't go over. Um, they've set those uh, pressures for a reason, so stick to those. The next tip, and this is a, a crucial one in my eyes, um, is checking the weather before you go out. Um, look at wind forecasts, um, look at tides, make sure you know exactly what the weather is going to be doing while you're out there on your chosen day. Just don't risk it if it's, uh, if it's too windy or the sea's too rough, too much swell, anything that uh, looks dangerous. If you're in any kind of doubt, then just don't go out basically. Um, there's loads of uh, different ways to check the check the weather forecasts, like apps on your phone. Um, those are brilliant, really good, accurate forecasts. Um, wind direction and wind speed forecasts are absolutely essential in my eyes. Um, so yeah, check your weather, check your tides, check the wind. Make sure you're confident with all of that stuff before you go out. Okay, the next tip for staying safe on board is um, weight distribution on board your sib. Um, they can suffer with um, weight distribution. If you have everything down one end, um, you, you're gonna suffer. So try to evenly spread out your equipment or passengers, if you have passengers, um, evenly across your sib so that uh, yeah, the weight is nice and even across the whole thing. Um, you could run into stability problems or things like that if you, if you don't spread the weight out nice and evenly. Another good tip is um, have a plan for if something does go wrong. Just think ahead about what you would do um, in certain situations. Just think it through before you're out there. Um, run it through with any passengers you have as well so that they are aware of what to do in an emergency. If you're incapacitated, then it's up to the passenger to take over. So they need to know how to start your outboard or how to operate the SIB, basically, how to use the VHF radio. Um, yeah, just give 
give your passengers a rundown and make sure you are completely um, confident in what you're doing. If an emergency was to ever happen, just plan ahead. And the last section is, um, again, some basic information about um, navigation, really. Um, I'm in the UK. I think the rules apply to most countries. Um, I think the I think USA is slightly different. Um, but yeah, learn some of the basic boat navigation rules for your country. Um, right of way, um, who has uh, right of way if you're coming head on, um, how to pass in a, in a head on situation. Um, learn those things, look it up on the internet, um, get familiar with um, buoys and channel markers and what they all mean. Um, you don't want to be out there and uh, getting yourself into a place where you shouldn't be or just causing mayhem by crossing in front of people or just being irresponsible and dangerous. Um, so yeah, learn learn the rules of the waterways that you're going to be on um, and yeah, abide to those sort of rules, speed limits, um, no wake zones, all of that stuff. It's really easy to find online. So have a quick search and uh, get familiar with all that stuff before you head out. And the last bit of info for you guys is um, depending on the country you're in, of course, but uh, make sure that you are gonna stay hydrated while you're out there, bring a drink, bring some food if you're staying out for a long time. Um, if it's very sunny, uh, wear sun protection, you don't want to be getting sunburnt. Um, and obviously, yeah, stay, stay in control, stay sober. <laughs> um, you don't wanna be um, completely losing control because uh, you've overdone it. Um, so yeah, make sure that you are staying in control for your entire trip. Um, stay safe and keep your passengers safe if you have any. Another bit of information regarding the weather, um, even when you're out there, um, don't forget to keep checking the weather, keep an eye on the weather, the conditions, the tide, the swell, just be alert for that stuff because it can change even when you're out there and the forecast might get it wrong, you know, the, the apps that you're using, they, they may predict one thing, but it, it might turn different while you're out there. So stay alert and keep looking at the wind direction and how that's affecting everything and what the tide is doing. Um, really important to know that and to, to stay focused on that at all times because it can change very quick while you're out there. So guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I think I've uh, covered most of the things that I can think of. Um, I hope you find those tips uh, useful and informative. Um, hope you uh, can get a good idea of the equipment I use and the, the basic principles I tend to follow whenever I go out. Um, so yeah, I really hope it was informative and uh, useful. Um, thanks again for watching as always, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.